All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're going to be going over bid strategies uh, in Google AdWords and Bing Ads. So for our example, we're going to go through Google AdWords, but this works just as well in Bing Ads. You could use the same exact strategy, same exact keyword match types, everything like that um, right in Bing Ads. So you don't have to worry about this just being a Google AdWords tutorial. If I did it in Bing Ads, it would look exactly the same. Um, so if you start your campaign in AdWords, you could actually just import it right to Bing as well. So uh, you don't really have to worry about doing this twice. Okay, so in order to get started, um, you definitely want to look up our one of our previous videos. It's going to be very close to this one on our channel, and it's our uh, video about keyword match types. Uh, you can go to our Google AdWords tutorial playlist, and it'll be there. But if you're not familiar with keyword match types, you definitely want to look at those first because um, this tutorial will make more sense uh, if you watch that first, if you're not familiar with them. Uh, if you're already familiar with them, I'm going to show you how I bid on keywords when I initially create my campaigns. So you can kind of steal my strategy and use the same thing. Just apply it to your niche, however you're targeting keywords. Um, so to get started, our example is going to be soccer cleats, which is a continuation of our, our last tutorial with keyword match types. Um, so we're going to go through different types of soccer cleats and how I would set up bids on my account. Uh, so first what you want to do is come into the keyword planner. So all we did was we just typed in soccer cleats. Uh, up here where the product or services typed in soccer cleats get ideas got tons of ideas and what's what you're going to see here is they have suggest suggested bids right in the keyword planner uh, so these are basically i don't know exactly how they come up with a, a suggested bids but you know to me it just looks like yeah it says they look at cost per clicks of the advertisers that are paying for that keyword taking the account location and search network settings you've selected so it's an estimate um Basically what they're telling you here is if you're going to be bidding on the keyword soccer cleats, you should bid 79 cents. That's what AdWords is telling you. I like to bid lower than what they tell me and then increase bids later. Uh, you definitely want to start your bids as low as possible. Um, so coming over here, the way you want to structure your campaign is you want to separate out kind of your broad keywords from more of your targeted keywords. So we've created a bunch of different ad groups here. We've started with a broad ad group, soccer cleats. Uh, we have an exact ad group called soccer cleats. And then we have a bunch of different ad groups here. So we have pink soccer cleats, black soccer cleats, women's soccer cleats, men's soccer cleats, and Adidas soccer cleats. And in each example, what we have is a keyword that we're targeting, uh, both a modified broad match and an exact match, a uh, suggested bid, or at least what we would bid initially. Uh, it might be a little bit less, but this is kind of a good example. And then the landing page where you're sending traffic to. So. Um, Let's just say, let's get started at the top here. So we have Adidas soccer cleats as our ad group. And now the way this works is we're bidding the highest for the exact match keyword of Adidas soccer cleats. Um, whereas if we go down to one of our lower ad groups down here, so let me scroll down. So if we have our exact soccer cleats here, it's a 35 cent bid. So when every time someone types in soccer cleats and just soccer cleats or soccer cleat, something like that, we just want to bid very low because it's a broad search. We don't know exactly where to send traffic to. And what we're going to do is send people to our, this is a fake landing page here, but it's our page with all soccer cleats. Um, so when someone types in soccer cleats, they can come into our page and then maybe they can use our filters if they're looking for men's, women's, pink, black, whatever. Um, and then even further down, we have our broad soccer cleats. So this, you keep broad because people are going to look up all sorts of things that might not be related. And if they look up something where they're targeting one of my keywords, I want to send them to the correct landing page. So let's just say someone types in, you know, best soccer cleats in 2000 or something like that. They're looking up historic soccer cleats or something like that. I'm only bidding 25 cents on that now. And if they do click on my ad, they're going to go to my page with all soccer cleats, which isn't what they're looking for. Um, but if they're looking for let's say for example, black soccer cleats, instead of coming here um, and, and targeting this keyword and sending people to my page here, all soccer cleats, what we're gonna do is if someone types in black soccer cleats, we want them to come through this ad group up here. So we have our black soccer cleats ad group. Our ad is gonna be something related to black soccer cleats. We're bidding a little bit higher here uh, so that this keyword is gonna take precedent over the more broad version of it. Um, so we can send people to the correct landing page where they're going to see just a huge list of black soccer cleats. So that's really the ultimate goal here and why you bid the way you do is you need to set up your campaign so that uh, you bid higher on certain keywords so that you're sending people to the right page uh, when they're kind of looking for whatever they're looking for. Um, so let's just say, for example, I go to Google, I'm looking for new soccer cleats, and let's just say I'm a man, I want black soccer cleats, and I, put, I type in men's black Adidas soccer cleats. Let's say I do that. So if I do that, 
what's going to happen is I'm targeting black soccer cleats here. So this modified broad match keyword would match what I just said, men's black sock or men's black Adidas soccer cleats. It would match this keyword with a 40 cent bid. It would match our men's keyword with a 50 cent bid, and it would match our Adidas soccer cleats keyword with a 56 cent bid. Now, assuming all the quality scores are the same, so let's just assume my landing pages and all that, Google ranks them all the same. Um, what's going to happen is instead of sending someone to the page with just a bunch of black soccer cleats that might be men's, women's, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, all sorts of different brands, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them directly to my Adidas soccer cleats page so that they can come in and just see Adidas soccer cleats. So if I'm a consumer and I'm looking for a specific brand, usually you're not going to sway from that brand too much. Um, so if I'm looking for Adidas, I'm going to want Adidas. I'm not going to go in and, and try to find Nike cleats that, in that case. Um, and when people come into this landing page, they can also click on some of my filters and click on, you know, I want to look up just men's soccer cleats or I want to look up just black Adidas soccer cleats. Um, so that's why you want to bid a little bit higher on this keyword up here. So uh, the way to think about it when you're targeting keywords is you want to structure your landing pages basically, basically by how valuable they are to you. Uh, so wherever you're sending traffic to, if you want to, uh, for example, if you're doing pink women's soccer cleats um, and someone types in pink soccer cleats, it's a 40% or 40 cent bid. If someone types in women's soccer cleats, it's a 50 cent bid. So instead of sending them to the pink soccer cleats page down here, I could just send them right to the women's soccer cleats page, uh, which should have some pink options on there. And then there'll be a filter on there so they can click on pink so they can find exactly what they're looking for. So it's pink women's soccer cleats. Um, so that's kind of how you want to look at it. And we bid lower on these broad match keywords down here because people are going to type in all sorts of things related to soccer cleats. Uh, so if we come back over to the keyword planner and just look up some examples, you could see like high top soccer cleats and the bid's pretty, a little bit lower here, 53 cents. Uh, maybe I look at cool soccer cleats. So instead of, you know, having cool soccer cleats match with the Adidas, I could just send them to my page here with all of my soccer cleats when someone types it in. I'm bidding really low, so hopefully I'm getting traffic for like a very low cost with this keyword. And then what you want to do is go in and, and keep adjusting your bids and also adding negative keywords because that's important for optimizing your campaigns. So to tie it all together, um, basically what I call this is a cascading bid strategy. So it means you're bidding lower on modified broad match keywords and bidding slightly higher on exact match keywords. Um, so we bid a little bit higher on the exact match version of soccer cleats, uh, pink soccer cleats. If someone types that in, we want to bid a little bit higher than the modified broad match version. The reason we do that is because someone types in cheap pink soccer cleats. We'd rather bid slightly lower on that person. Uh, whereas if someone's typing in pink soccer cleats, we just want to show them everything we have and bid slightly higher. And you can keep adjusting this bids. Maybe you find that this bid is even a little bit too high. You come down here, go to 20 cents, maybe the exact match version. You're not driving many sales using this, so you just come down to 25 cents. And you can keep coming down with these. So pink, you come down a little bit to 35 cents. And you come down here to 42 cents or something like that. And you just keep coming down with your bidding um, so that you can keep driving more clicks and improving your overall revenue and profits. And the way you kind of figure that out is you just run your campaigns for a little bit, get some data. Uh, if you're getting a lot of impressions, clicks, and you're starting to drive sales with a low bid and you're very profitable, what you can do is increase your bids. So it's going to increase your costs a little bit, but at least you're driving more sales. So you can focus on uh, continuously driving sales uh, more often than not. Um, but this is basically how we set up our campaigns and bid on everything. Um, so if I put everything in one nice ad group here for you and just separate them out so you can kind of see... kind of see how it all works. And obviously in each ad group, you're going to have ads that kind of match with each other. Um, so, you know, if someone's typing in soccer cleats, cheap, you know, something like that, 2017, 2018, I want to bid really low on them. But if someone's typing in, you know, pink soccer cleats, you go up a little bit higher. Um, and then when someone types in this keyword and I bid a little bit higher, I can make sure that I'm sending them to the landing page like I had here. So pink soccer cleats. So that's so important. And that's why uh, the correct bidding strategy helps you so much because if someone's looking for, you know, free black soccer cleats and you're bidding on that keyword and you're bidding pretty high here, so let's say I'm up to a dollar thirty-five, a dollar fifty-two, something like that, and I'm they're clicking through here, they're not gonna, they're not gonna be the best customer. So you want to keep your bids really low when you're starting and then adjust them as you go. And we would keep building out this campaign here, so maybe you're starting to get some more, um, some more idea ideas, and maybe instead of Adidas or along with Adidas, you add Nike and Under Armour and some of these different uh, different brands that uh, are known for soccer cleats. Again, you come in the Google Keyword Planner here. So I could see like youth soccer cleats. Again, if you're looking at Nike and youth soccer cleats, um, this is a perfect example of why you use a cascading bid strategy because 
if someone's looking for youth soccer cleats, you might put that above all else because why would I send someone to a page with adult soccer cleats if they're only looking for youth soccer cleats? Um, so same with kids soccer cleats here, things like that. So that's kind of really where you want to focus is on your bid strategy. Make sure that when people are typing in keywords, you're sending them to the correct landing page. That's the ultimate goal of your bid strategy. Make sure you're sending people to the best landing page that's going to help them drive results. Uh, I've taken over campaigns before where uh, people have like one random ad group here. So let's just say I have men's soccer cleats and I set my bid here for, you know, $2.50 and the exact match version $2.55 and everything else is really low. What's going to happen is so much of your traffic is going to come through this ad group and you're going to start targeting, you know, every single keyword when people are typing in cheap men's soccer cleats, Nike men's soccer cleats, and everything is going to go to this one landing page, which isn't terrible, but it's definitely not a best practice. And best practice is setting up your bids in a way so that you're sending people to their correct landing pages, controlling your costs and driving sales. And that's ultimately what we found works best with us. Um, if you prefer not to use the modified broad match version here, like of men's soccer cleats or Adidas soccer cleats, you can also use a phrase match. Um, so if you're really focusing more on Adidas soccer cleats, something like that, you can use phrase match versions of your keywords. I like to use modified broad because it gives you just a little bit more um, in terms of overall volume. And you can see that when you go to our uh, keyword match types video. So uh, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. Uh, this is kind of how we set up everything. The key is to use your niche and focus on your landing pages. So you want to rank your landing pages in terms of basically overall importance and how valuable you think they are. So if I say, I think the Adidas soccer cleats page is more valuable than my men's or women's or my pink or black, you know, down here, black, uh, pink soccer cleats. If I think Adidas is the most valuable, I want to make sure I'm sending people to that page. So you just bid slightly higher here, even if someone's looking for, you know, pink women's Adidas soccer cleats. Instead of sending them to all of our pink soccer cleats, send them right to our Adidas soccer cleats. Uh, maybe you separate it out by women's and men's, something like that. So uh, definitely something you want to keep working at. Um, and the more ad groups you have here, the easier it is to kind of it's not easier to manage your campaigns, but you definitely have more control over everything. Uh, your campaigns are going to be more organized, and you're sending people to the absolute best landing pages possible. Um, so just to kind of try to give you a quick exam, so now we can find some issues. So Adidas, they have soccer lacrosse cleats, so a little bit weird here, um, kind of two different sports, but maybe they kind of work together. They can be lacrosse or soccer cleats. I would say this ad isn't what they want to show me here. They definitely would rather show me Adidas women's soccer cleats rather than lacrosse. Definitely not interchangeable words. Um, Adidas women's cleats. So again, like what I said before was pink women's Adidas, you know, soccer cleats. They have Adidas as uh, important and then women's. So Adidas women's cleats, um, soccer.com, Adidas women's cleats, eastbay.com, Adidas women's soccer cleats. And then if we come over here to the shopping section, you can see, so this is, boys grade yep these are boys shoes men's soccer cleats but pink women's soccer cleats but not pink so here's really the closest thing that actually works here in the shopping section um, some of these aren't really pink um, some of these are not women's um, so you definitely want to have things targeted right again shopping campaigns aren't targeted the same way as as keyword campaigns but I would say this adidas.com ad up here probably not what they want even though it says soccer lacrosse cleats I've never really heard that I think they're as far as I know they're different um, but maybe not maybe if you're depending on the position you play so that's basically how it works you just want to make sure your ads coming up correctly okay so that's basically it that's our bidding strategy so you can see here we have our Adidas soccer cleats what you would keep doing is building it out so maybe you add another ad group here uh, let's pretend we're at it let's pretend we are keeping this one we're adding a new one maybe you go men's Adidas soccer cleats and we'll just keep phrase matching here for now. I'd probably do a modified broad match with the plus signs. And what you would do, since we already have our other Adidas with this bid, what we do is come up here and go, you know, 65 cents, 70 cents. So now when someone types in men's Adidas soccer cleats, we can send them to the page with men's Adidas soccer cleats. And then we would do the same thing for women's, uh, things like that. So you just want to keep ranking your, your ad groups basically by how important they are to you, how valuable they are to, to you, and and adjust your bids accordingly um, so that you're bidding correctly on, on exactly what you want. So that's our video for the day. Uh, if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments section. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you learned something. Make sure you go watch our keyword match types videos if you already haven't. 
Um, and we should have a lot more Google AdWords and Bing Ads tutorials coming out in 2018. So uh, stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, and share our videos. Thanks again.